And just a few extra tips um, which will help you along the way. First of all, there's your fingernail. Um, if you look at my fingernail here, this is on my index finger. Notice it's not that long, but there is a little bit of a fingernail there. Sorry if it's a bit dirty, I've been out in the garden. Um, so it doesn't even come above the flesh of the tip, but there is a little bit of fingernail there. Now the thing about your fingernail is you want to keep it fairly short and um, don't cut it with a pair of scissors. Use um, some wet and dry sandpaper. Very, very fine. Just go over the, over the top there. Um, regarding which part of the fingernail, if you hold it up like a clock face and you, and you look at it like, um, as you mentioned, uh, 12 o'clock in the middle, um, a lot of the books will say strike with the 10 o'clock part of the fingernail. And it was actually Adam Hurt who suggested to me that I try playing with the 2 o'clock part of my fingernail. Um, and sure enough, that um, seemed to be a lot easier. It's kind of on the basis that that's the bit which kind of would naturally strike, whereas the 10 o'clock would have my hand more like that. So, um, but you know, mess around, see what, see what works well for you. But I'd keep an open mind about which part of the fingernail you strike with um, in the early stages. Um, keep the other fingernails cut short. I'd recommend, although that's more important on this hand for the fret playing, which we'll look at um, in, a, in another video another time. Um, another thing is the height. If I just play it like this, try not to play tight against the head of the banjo so you're striking like that. Okay, try and have your hand like that. If you if you if you imagine holding it like that and letting it drop down. That's much easier than pulling it up like that with all your, you see all my tendons are standing up. So again, it's about using the weight of your hand. So a little bit of height, it can be like, I don't know, the your wrist here, the point of it can be about four, five, even six inches away from the actual surface of the banjo there. Um, but I would be careful about getting too low. You do see banjo players playing down very low and they're very good banjo players. And if you're playing like a melodic style with lots of drop thumb, that might be necessary. Sort of like, almost like knocking on the door um, in the action like that. But to start with, I'll get, I'll get the wrist up. Um, there's another reason it also enables you to move in an arc like that, because every string you strike, or whether you're doing drop thumbs, where you bring your thumb down, and they will often it's often easier if you're able to move uh, the wrist around and get the hand in at different angles and present the striking finger at different angles. If you're down here, that movement's much more difficult. So it's all about trying to make it easier for yourself. Um, and finally, the actual striking action itself, um, it's kind of like straight down, I suppose, but I tend to create a sort of a, a circle when I play like that. Um, it, it doesn't have to be like straight down onto the strings. It, as I said before, you can play it, you tend to play at different angles according to the string. Um, if you're doing a brush stroke, then you, then you actually go across the strings as you would with a ukulele or a guitar. Um, but the general movement is kind of in a repetitive circle which kind of forms like a sort of like a, a flattened ellipse kind of shape if i was to film myself that's how it feels anyway but you don't have to think about that too much but but the angle is sort of not straight down but slightly like that for me so something else to think about <laughs>